So what is the difference between a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a therapist, and a counsellor, and who is the best fit for you? Hello, my name is Dante, I'm a registered psychologist from Australia, and there's a lot of different mental health professions that all sound pretty similar. So let's explore what are the roles of each of them, what can some of them do that others cannot, the level of training, the level of qualification, the costs, and so forth. This is obviously from an Australian perspective, but much of what I say will apply to America and many other countries as well. First, let's talk about the term therapist. When people use the term therapist, therapist in the mental health world, this just means a person who works with a client to reach their mental health goals. That's it. So a lot of different people could be called a therapist. So while I'm a psychologist and I do things like assessment and diagnosing mental health issues, I'm also a therapist because I work with people to reach their mental health goals. But there are also regulated and unregulated terms and job titles. And therapist is an unregulated, unprotected title. Literally anybody without any training, qualification or oversight can call themselves a therapist. Another term which is completely unprotected and unregulated is the term counsellor. Literally any person can wake up in the morning and declare to the world that they are a counsellor and put that on the name of their business. This is very different from protected and regulated terms like psychology and psychiatry where A, we have to meet minimum levels of training and education, and B, there are regulatory oversight bodies that guarantee code of ethics, behavior, and the way that we practice. Now, in Australia, there are some independent from the government self-regulating bodies, such as PACFA, where counselors or people who call themselves counselors can voluntarily join these organizations. And these organizations have admission criteria to ensure that the only people who can join them are people that have at least some degree of certification and qualification. And internationally, like for example in the USA, again, anyone can call themselves a counselor, but there are protected terms such as licensed counselor where you do have to meet some minimum qualification and have some oversight. And so while the term counselor or therapist is unprotected and literally anybody could call themselves that without any training or qualification, there are people who call themselves counselors or therapists, but who are quite good at what they do and who have pursued higher education and done a lot of professional development to get good at their job. But this is still kind of a big deal and something to keep in mind because when you go to see someone like a psychologist or a psychiatrist, who is under a government regulatory body, we have OPRA in Australia that regulates that, you know that there is regulation, there is oversight, there's a minimum level of training and education, there is a code of ethics that they have to abide by, there's several things that are in place to ensure that this person actually knows how to do their job and does their job proficiently. Whereas if you compare this to a counsellor or a therapist who isn't part of a regulatory body, there are no standards of training or conduct or treatment. In terms of qualifications, psychologists require both undergraduate and postgraduate training and study in psychology. Psychiatrists are required to complete undergraduate training, go through medical school, and do postgraduate training in psychiatry. Both psychologists and psychiatrists are registered and regulated by OPRA. When it comes to counselors, some of them will complete certificates or bachelors, some do masters and PhDs, others pursue professional development certificates, but there are certainly people who call themselves counselors and therapists who have no formal training or accreditation whatsoever. So if you are seeing buddy and you're not sure what they background is, it can be valuable to inquire about that. When it comes to the prescription of medication, only people who have been through medical school can do this. So psychiatrists can do this for adults and children and pediatricians can do this for children. Internationally, there are some exceptions to this. I know that in the USA, some states have what they call prescribing psychologists. When it comes to the assessment and diagnosis of mental health conditions or other psychological issues, this can fall both into the realm of psychology and psychiatry. Both psychologists and psychiatrists can make diagnoses when it comes to mental health issues like depression, anxiety, etc. And when it comes to things like neurodevelopmental disorders like ADHD and autism. But quite often the actual assessment itself tends to more often be taken care of by psychologists because psychologists generally are trained on using more assessment tools than psychiatrists are. Psychiatrists have to spend their time studying more about medication, whereas psychologists can focus more on assessment tools and things like this. When it comes to the costing of things, generally you get what you pay for in terms of the amount of study that a person has done and the amount of regulation that's present in that field. So counselors are generally the cheapest by far. Um, psychologists generally are quite a bit more expensive than the average counselor. And the average psychiatrist is, again, significantly more expensive than the average psychologist. In terms of practice, like you show up to a psychiatrist's office or a psychologist's office or a counselor's office, what is actually different? So many psychiatrists are more focused on medication as opposed to things like talk therapy or behavioral therapy. Now, of course, this isn't always the case. There are definitely plenty of psychiatrists out there who do engage in these types of therapy. 
But in my experience and working with a lot of clients, what tends to happen is that psychiatrists will work more on the medication management side of things. And if the psychiatrist feels that this person in front of them would benefit, they will then refer them out to a psychologist. Psychologists and counselors both can engage in different types of therapy. So things like cognitive behavioral therapy, things like play therapy, there's a billion different modalities that they could engage in. This really comes down to what is the training that the person has. So rather than being like, oh, all psychologists do this, all counselors do this, it really ends up coming down more to the specific practitioner that you're working with. One of the big differences though is that counselors won't be doing standardized assessments. They won't be testing for memory or IQ or personality. It really comes down to the person that you're gonna be working with, the practitioner that is in front of you. There are some psychiatrists who are only interested in medication management and not at all in the talk therapy or behavioral therapy side of things but there are some psychiatrists who are really good at these things. There are some psychologists who only really do assessment and diagnosis and then refer out for the actual therapy part of therapy. There are some counselors who have absolutely no clue what they're doing, but there are some who are very well trained in specific areas and quite competent at their job. So who should you actually see or who should you refer a client to or who should you maybe recommend that a family member or friend goes to see? The first question is, do they need medication? And if the answer to that is clearly yes, then they need to go see a psychiatrist. If the answer is maybe, or I don't know, which it probably will be most of the time because most people don't have a clear understanding of what needs medication and what doesn't, then generally going to see a psychiatrist or a psychologist for an evaluation of their mental health and their condition can then inform whether or not it would be useful to investigate the use of medications. If the answer is no, probably not, there's no need for medication, then seeing either a psychologist or a counselor is probably gonna be fine. But the main thing is, is you want to find someone who has training and experience in the field that you're actually looking for. So what you realistically want to ask is when you go to a psychologist or you go to a counselor, you ask them the question of, do you have the experience and the training to work with what I am bringing to the table? Whether that's experience working with kids or working with neurodivergence or working with depression or eating disorders or obsessive compulsive disorders, whatever it is that you are bringing to the table, does the person in front of you have the training and experience to know how to actually manage that? Or do you need to find someone who's more specialized in that area? Not everyone is trained to work with every single issue that may present itself in front of them. So it's really important to ask to make sure that the person that you're working with actually can help you with what you want. So those are the main differences between psychiatrists, counselors, and psychologists. In general, they can all fall under the umbrella of being a therapist. Counselors and therapists and psychotherapists are unprotected, unregulated terms. So a person calling themselves that may actually have no qualification or training. Some of them will, however, so it's important just to inquire and see what does this person know? What is their background? What is their education? Psychiatrists can manage medication, whereas psychologists cannot. And when it comes to formal assessment and diagnosis, this is both in the realm of psychologists and psychiatrists. I hope this clears up this slightly confusing topic. If you have any questions or you feel like I didn't explain the point well enough, leave a comment and I'll get back to it either with a comment reply or with a short video reply. And if there's any other topics that you want covered related to mental health or psychology, again, leave it as a comment and I'll either reply with a comment or a video response. Thank you for watching. Bye.